Well, we had the perfect opportunity present itself overnight, and we had a nice sprinkle of rain, and I can see the inside of the brush pile is still dry. So all the ground surrounding it's wet, and for a brush pile this size, uh, perfect timing. No wind out this morning. I don't have to worry about that. And this, this thing's going to burn pretty hot. Now this is all the uh, cedar branches and things that we just cut off the trail, uh, opening this trail up back here by the pond. So you guys got to see that footage already. And I'll tell you, uh, just what a great way to keep the trails clean, keep it to where we can mow the grass on them, and uh, be able to ride back there, walk back there, or anything we choose to do, and not have all this stuff laying around and in the way. Makes the property look great. And uh, it's a little extra work, you know, but it's worth it. Specifically making videos for you guys. I, I want you to see it clean. Let's burn this thing and we'll see how it's going to go. I got a feeling it's going to burn pretty quick. Thanks for watching. Like I said, it couldn't be a better time to burn something like this, just simply due to the size of it. Having this all removed from the trails back there is just absolutely perfect. I was going to wait to do burn the brush pile on our night ride, but I could never get the weather to time out. Uh, we have had so, so much high wind, and then we came through the snowstorm, uh, and every time I'd come down here and get ready to fire this thing up, the weather would change. So this morning's perfect, though. Here in just a few minutes, we're going to feel like we're standing around a campfire. Look at that. I knew this would go pretty quick. Let's get it lit up and get this torch out of the way. And the mule. And you got to watch fires like this because it'll definitely pop out and grab you. Let's get this thing back. That wasn't three minutes and I already had to move you guys back from that. I mean, that, I figured it was going to go fast. Move the propane tank back in the apartment. I really wish I could have waited for nighttime to burn that for you guys. It really does look really neat at night. But it is a perfect time to welcome all of our new subscribers. Uh, we do a lot of work here as far as keeping our trails maintained. We ride in the mule, we visit with our grandchildren, and we try to bring you guys along for the journey. So thank you for subscribing, and I hope you enjoy what you see. It, uh, I've said it before and I'll say it again, you really don't never know what you're going to see on the channel until it happens. Look at that. I mean, that thing is going.
I can feel the heat all the way back here and we're 45, 50 feet away from it. Well, I tell you, there is nothing better though when you're sitting around a campfire. We, we won't consider that a campfire. That's a little bit larger than that. Sitting around a campfire at nighttime, enjoying your family, and just enjoying the fire. I mean, it's actually relaxing. We couldn't have had a better day to burn this fire because everything being wet around it, it turned out perfect. Wow. Now I will say that's another advantage of building a fire like this. If you're clearing property, and you get yourself a, a front pile stacked up like that, and we honestly did stack that right in there. So much like a campfire. Now once that gets to this level, and you was knocking down a bunch of trees and things like that, you can start pushing your trees into that, and I'm, you'll burn every bit of it. Because now the fire actually has something to sustain itself. And when you're pushing trees and things, you always gather a bunch of dirt as you're sliding it across the ground. And that'll typically, if you don't have a good fire, it'll put a fire out. But green trees, brush, and things like that, it's, it's difficult to burn. If you get something like that built first and then start pushing to it, you can burn anything you want to push to it. So that is hot. brother-in-law Richard when we were kids we were sitting on a river bank and much like this weather uh, it was 60 70 degrees through the daytime and then it was dropping down to 30s and 40s at night long story short we had a really nice campfire going and uh, his mom had bought him a new pair of shoes and a new pair of glasses for school like I said we were kids and uh, he's always been a little cold natured anyway so he's a little close to the fire so Rich, so, I don't know if you need to be that close, all would be fine. So he took his new shoes off and set them back probably about six feet away from the fire and set his new glasses on top of them. Well, as the night goes on, we got to build the campfire a little bit bigger and Rich was having himself a really nice nap. And we noticed his shoes <laughs> starting to smoke. So we woke him up and when he bent over and, and grabbed his glasses off of his shoes, and put them on his face, the cold air hit the glass on those glasses and it shattered both of them. Now, so he lost his new pair of shoes and his glasses in the same trip and had to explain that to his mom. Oh boy. It was definitely a conversation that I didn't want to have to have any part of. Uh, seven minutes into it now, I think, or so. Wow. That was something we've always done as a family pastime, is fishing, go down on the river, set up tents, throw out some catfish lines, and just enjoy ourselves. I have many uh, fishing stories of sitting down on the riverbank and having a good time. And like I said, when he lost his shoes and his glasses all in the same 30 seconds, though, we look back on it now. I mean, we probably wasn't laughing quite as hard then as I am now, but, you know.
going to be nice to have that out of the lower part of the yard here too, the mowing grass. Now that'd be the perfect time where the fire's at now. Again, if you're clearing ground, you can start pushing anything you want to into that. The large trees lay right around the edge of it, shove them right up on the fire. When we cleared this property here, uh, I had 10 fires that size burning simultaneously. I mean, we laid down some trees in here now. We kept all of the uh, material out of the trees that we could use as far as cedar posts and things like that. So we had all these cedar tops and uh, various species of trees. We had some hickories and some oaks that wasn't worth saving and uh, we shoved those in and got a fire started, a small fire, and then started laying brush on top of it. And I'll tell you, once you get a fire that size built now, that thing can burn for four or five days sitting there. It's going to build itself or burn itself right down into an ash pile. And then all those coals and things like that will lay right underneath that fire. And for days, that thing, I, I can come out here three or four days from now and just stir the ashes up and throw some brush on it and go right back to burn it. Also a great way to make charcoal. At this point, you could run down there and cover that up or put it out with water. And you can turn every bit of that into charcoal. Now that is one thing. When we were pushing in the pond down here, again, we was clearing trees. And I had a John Deere 2030. So large, it was a 75, uh, actually, yeah, 75 horse John Deere with a front end loader on it that I was pushing down trees and then carrying them to a brush pile, much like what we have set there. Uh, we started the clearing process about five days before we actually started to try to move the dirt around down there. The brush pile was pretty well burnt out. It, it had been sitting there in an ash pile for four days at this point. So as I was pushing brush, I started passing that up and was sweeping it to the outside of what is now the pond dam down here. And uh, on that big old 75 horse tractor, as I pushed the edge of the ashes in, I ended up setting on a smoldering piece of wood that was in the ash pile and burnt a hole in my tire. So now we're having the high lift delivered. I've got the tractor in the middle of where we needed to start to uh, build the pond with a flat tire on it. So that, that was an adventure. And I'll tell you what, uh, the tires, I forgot what size they were, but they were probably almost six feet tall and they had fluid in them. So hauling that thing up from the pond dam up here to where we could get it on a pickup truck into town to get it repaired, we were down for about four hours there. And once, a, once you rent a machine, then the hours become imperative. You want to be working and, and utilizing what you're paying for. So just one of those things. Like I said, I got a little too close to the edge of it after it's setting dormant for four days, and there was still enough coal in there to burn a hole in that tire. I really hope you guys enjoy the video. Don't set your tennis shoes or new glasses too close to a campfire, and whatever you do, don't run your tractor through it and have yourself a flat. I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.